Alright, so if you wanted to get particles to behave in a, or like planets, the first thing you'd have to do is get them to go in a circle around something. So I'm going to create an emitter, and in the particle shape, I'm going to set the max emission to your max count to one, so we can just worry about one for the moment. So how do we get this particle? to go in a circle. Well we can write a conditional expression based on its ID. So if I change its render attribute to numeric it will show you the ID of the particle. The first one born is particle zero. So what we can do is say if particle's ID is zero act like the planet Earth for example. So if we write a runtime expression if ID is equal to zero, we're going to want it to go in a circle. So how do we get it to do that? We can use the sine and cosine functions on the x and z, which is a wave that uh, will make your particle go back and forth in the different axes. So, so if the ID is zero, we want the position to behave in a specific way. So we can say sine of time for x. For y, we don't want it to go up and down, so we'll put a zero there. And for z, we'll say cosine of time. So create that. And now when we hit play, we can watch particle zero go in a circle. Now you can see how it's going only to the one and negative one marks. What if you want it to go farther than that? You can quickly just multiply this whole piece, well each axis, by two. For example, and now it'll go from here. It'll be over here when we hit play again. So two times cosine of time and we'll edit that and now it goes way out to 2 in each axis alright so what if we want it to go faster or slower you can just add some math in here either multiply by a number divide by a number and it'll go faster or slower so if we want it to go slower we can multiply it by point five so we'll go half the speed. We'll do that in both axes so it stays in a circle. Oops, point five. Edit that and when we rewind it goes even slower. Alright, so after a while you're gonna be tweaking these a lot. So what I'll usually do is write a vector variable to hold all this information so I can just edit it at the top and then I don't have to dig through what ends up being quite a bit of code down here. So we'll say vector for earth is equal to all this stuff and then we can just put this down here and it should behave the exact same way. Sure enough it does. Alright, so how do we get another planet to orbit this? Well first let's make sure we can actually get two particles out. So up top under emission attributes, max count, set it to two. Now when we hit play, two particles will be born. Particle 0, which we have expressions on, and particle 1, which does not have anything on it. So it just floats off. So how do we get that one to go in a circle around that? In our expression, we can do the same thing. So let's just write a new variable for the moon. For now, we'll just make it say the same thing. 
so this would mean it would just stay on top of it so if we wanted to go in its own circle around this circle we can just add these two together and we can offset the speed and this is amplitude or distance from its origin we can adjust all that stuff so for the moon let's get rid of that so it's closer and we'll make this go twice as fast as the earth so now we just have to make sure that we'll copy this and we'll make sure that the particle with the ID of 1 moves in the earth plus the moon so now we can watch particle 1 which is the moon go around particle 0 which is the earth and it'll go around the origin you hit alt b you'll change your background color which is what i just did so hopefully you can see it a little better but you can watch one go in a counterclockwise motion around zero so in the next video i'll show you how you can add geometry to these and uh... set up a control so no matter where you want your solar system you can just move a locator and everything will update.